Welcome to Season 2 of Trap Talk. Brought to you by Craig Off. With that being said, Trap Talk listeners, if you love everything about Trap Talk, please subscribe to our page. Also, throw some likes on the videos that you enjoy. It really means the world to us. Yeah, comment on each episode. We read them. We respond to them. With that, let's get to the show. Welcome back to another episode of Trap Talk. I'm your host, Zach Nanini, and I'm here with my co-host and good friend, Richard Marshall Jr. Welcome back to the show, Rick. Thanks, buddy. Good to be here. We've been uh, traveling, shooting, teaching, about a bit of everything. Yeah, you you know, I, I traveled a little bit. Uh, we, you know, the Southern Grand, the Spring Grand, then I've been home working, but then you went Southern Grand, Spring Grand, ACUIs, lessons, just you're nonstop. I can't keep up with you. It, it, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. But yeah, but I it, just got home uh, from the Collegiate Nationals. That's another episode. We'll talk That's about that. That's another episode, but we'll talk That's about right. that. But but yeah, but today, uh, what we wanted to do for the listeners was just recap uh, the Southern Grand a little bit, talk about yep. what's going on there, uh, how the week went, some of the winners, and um, maybe some other things. But, <laughs> but, but, oh, folks, stay tuned for the other stay, thing. <laughs> stay tuned for other things. Stay tuned for other things. But um, I guess, Rick, where do you want to start? I mean, you want to talk about the winners? You want to talk about the weather? I mean, what, what was what was going on for you there that week? You know, it was uh, it was a quick shoot. I mean, it like, bam, it showed up. You know, I was at the Spring Grand. I taught there, did the Spring Grand, shot, had a great shoot there, left, came home. I was home, I guess, three days. Then I had a college shoot that we hosted, and that took, a lot. I had 140, I think it was 145 kids that we hosted, um, our biggest shoot to date. And, uh, so I did that on Saturday, Sunday, you guys were all sitting down in the sunshine in Florida. And, uh, Tyler and I left that Monday morning and flew down and, and got in and, and, uh, you know, started shooting then what Tuesday, I guess. So, yeah. It, yeah, we, you know, so we we shot Monday without you guys, and then Tuesday you guys came in, and you know we had the whole squad the rest of the week. I'd say, you know, biggest takeaway that I was really impressed with at the Southern was just the size of the shoot this year was was up quite yeah. a bit. I know last year I went there, and forgive me if I'm wrong, Rick, but you missed it last year. Is that true? Yeah, we were the Arizona State shoot because White Flyer um, was doing testing. Uh, do some testing on the new uh, Eco Flyer. So, so, so last yeah. year you missed it, and um, and I was there last year, and I believe that it was like, I don't know, eleven hundred shooters, or it wasn't? No, it was a little less than eleven hundred, but it ended up being a four factor. And I just did the math on it with you, and they had thirteen oh one this year, so it's it's going to be a five. Yeah, yeah, it's probably one of their bigger shoots in a while. Um, it yeah, was, it was a good shoot. Like a good, good. Almost three hundred people more showed up this year than yeah. than last year. And the, the big, if, if you haven't been to the Southern Grand people, the big barrier that they have is they don't have a ton of traps there. Like you know, it's not a yeah. super huge, tr super huge club. And yeah. they used to have more traps, correct, Rick? Yeah, they have. They had some issues with um, neighbors and stuff and, and encroachment. Uh, yeah, like the noise well, and. You know, with the noise and everything, which we all run into, and that's why, you know, you got to really do your due diligence when you're, you know, uh, own a club or manage a club. Setting on. a club up, yeah. Yeah, and they have a restriction on their hours. So during the week, normal weeks, they can only shoot from 9 to 4. Now they have a special permits for... The shoots. Um, shoots. The Southern, the 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 state shoot. state shoot. I think there's one other shooter, maybe two, that they can go a little later. 
But it's yeah, like, and my, my understanding is it's 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., the absolute latest. So the one thing that's a little different there, if you're going to pre-squad and you're getting on an early squad, you're not going to get to shoot practice in the morning. And the other thing that we had happen that they changed is they had so many people coming in uh, during the weekend, which hats off to them for making this adjustment because I think it was the right game time decision. But they had two practice traps on the gun club side. And then they had another two traps that they weren't utilizing on the golf side. And because of the extra people came that came in, they went from 10 banks to 12 banks. So they, they converted over the practice trap, turned that into a bank, and then they opened up another two traps that they had as backup traps and, and ran that. So literally they ran every single trap they could run. Downside yeah. was no, no practice trap anymore, but the upside yeah. was they didn't have to turn anybody away. And you know, I'm a big fan of not turning anyone away when they show up because it would kind of suck to get all the way down there and then be like, Hey, I want to shoot. And we're like, Oh, sorry, we're full. You know what I mean? We're full and you can't do it. And, that, and that's part of the issue. And that's where, you know, the, I've been going to the silver dollar since I was 20, 21. So I missed it. I think once. And that was last year uh, for the Southern, but yeah, it, it's a great facility uh, for people that haven't been there. You should put it on your calendar for next year. Um, you know, they have rough, can use up to 12 banks. Now, they're two trap banks, okay? Um, and the doubles, I'm not a huge fan of it, but we shot 100 to trap. I like 50-50. Um, you know, I mean, it. it's just kind of my preference. You know, you get I like 50-50, too. I think... I don't know. I guess they're assuming it goes just a little bit faster because you start with all the traps at the same time. But but really, yeah. I don't know if it's that much faster by the time you get it rolling. Um, it, 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 what I don't like about that 100 a trap is if you get a bad trap, it sucks. If you get a good trap yeah. and you're dialed in on it, I mean, then yeah. that's kind of cool. But, I mean, just y y you never know with that, that kind of a deal. There's not many places that do that 100 to a trap anymore. No, and here's the bad thing. If you have a trap and it's broke down, you know, it, it can really cause some headache with just doing 100 a trap. But, hey, I get it. You know, it, it's their shoot. Um, it, it was ran very well. Um, you know, hats off to them down there uh, for that. It's, you know, the targets are always sporty in Florida. So yeah. people that complain a lot about it, I've been going there a long time. I've broke 200s there. I've broke 190s there. I've broke 100s in the handicap there. Or one 100, actually, only in, in Florida. But I have broke 100 there all the way down to in the 80s, low 80s. You know, 100s and doubles to low 90s and doubles at times. So it's one of those things is you take each event at its own and move on. You know, I, had, I, I didn't get a T-Charlie at all there. Because of the the lack of practice fields, which is fine, because I you know it's my son's spring break, so Tyler and I went and did some other stuff. You know we got to see the Yankees and Pirates play, um, which I'm a big Yankees fan and I'm also a Pirates fan because uh, of Jody, <laughs> you know. But um, you know it, it's just a good time. You know we did a lot of stuff. We did some podcasts. You know, down there. Yeah, um, we, we got Herbert Lewis done, which was which was yep. a great one, and we also got Tanks Lun Lunsford in. Tanks which Lunsford in. Th those are going to be great episodes coming down the pipe. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I really liked Herbert, and and I mean Tank too. I mean they're both a wealth of knowledge. They've both been around the game oh, yeah. for a very long time. Yeah, absolutely. So so let's get into some little bit of advice while we're talking about the weather and the targets, because you said you've shot Florida for years and you yep. said you've had some really good success with it. And then you've had some, you know, non successful events, as we all have. Um, I, I was experienced to a couple of those last week and I had a couple of good ones, too. But but what do you think you're changing in Florida on that target at the dollar uh, to, to, to keep you when you're shooting your best scores? What are the things that you're focused on doing to make you know, it work? At, at the silver dollar, folks, it, for all the listeners out there, you really got to look at the target. You, you uh, honestly, every target, no matter if you're shooting singles, handicap, or doubles, pay attention. Um, it, they that heavier air, the background there. I mean, on the golf side, you got the golfers out there golfing. 
crocodiles, know, pe- uh, yeah, the, the, yeah, what were those, those pink, those alligator. pink birds walking around. I don't know what the heck they were called, but I mean, flamingos freaking they're called, listen, they're called sandhill cranes. Yeah. Those that, cranes, the, the, the ribeyes of the sky. That's right. Yeah. No, it was, uh, you know, the, the, like I said, the dollar's a great place. There's a ton of houses on the facility that people own. They do rent them. There's some RV spots for rent. Um, you know, for everybody out there, all our listeners and subscribers, come to the Southern. Try it. It's a. There's a lot of stuff to do. Um, you know, you have 27 holes of golf on the complex, too. If you like to golf. This is the first year that I didn't go out and at least play nine holes um, wow. while I was there. And I was just, we were so busy, you know, between, you know, shooting, podcasts, going to baseball games, doing other stuff, police raids, you know, we'll get into that later. It, but. it, it, it was a busy week, you know, it, it's, it goes by so fast and I think, you know, it's only 200 targets a day, but it's just snap and it's gone and it's done. And I think it's cause it's Florida and you're like, Oh, I want to go have some good food. But like you go down there and you know, we had a couple really good meals for anybody that hasn't been, I, I check out the sponge docks. Um, yep. you know, they've got some great Greek food down there. We went to uh, Hel- Helena's, I think is what they call it. We had a good dinners oh, or Hella's. I don't yeah. know how you say it. JT yeah. would tell, tell you, but, yeah, but, yeah. but they, they've, they've the got grouper, great food down fresh, there. Fresh grouper. Mm. Yeah, the grouper's amazing. Um, me and Zach and Elena went out to a sushi place one night that was off the hook and uh, and had some really, really good food there. So, you know, I think one of my favorite parts of going to Florida every year, other than getting out of the Midwest in, you know, in this time of the year is, is the food. You go down there yeah. and you, you see the people. They got a lot of good cuisine, a lot of good seafood. So if you're a seafood fan, I think the Southern Grand is a must to put on your schedule go down there and check it out. And, you know, and I would advise you to pre-squad early because if you don't get a squad and they book up, yeah. you're not going right. So get, yeah, you can get on the, the waiting list the weekend. I know on the singles championship, they limit to 90 squads. Um, and they were actually, I think over that. Well, they did year. it because they had the extra banks. Extra, they, they yeah. opened up another 86, I think was the number, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, 486. You know, yeah, they didn't want to. They didn't want to turn people away. So you know, hats off to them for doing that. Like well, hundred squads great. is five hundred people. So and that's full squads, right? So we got. I mean, 486. Five is four hundred and fifty, Zach. Huh? And you're my financial guy. Hey, you know what? We got I'm it handled, handle, Rick. <laughs> but no, in all honesty, it is. It was a great time. Um. They, they threw, like I said, it, you the gun club side to the golf side, you got different backgrounds, you know, targets. They try to throw the targets all the same. Um, it's so yeah. hard because the weather on one side of the gun club can be different than the weather on the other side of the gun club. I've experienced, like, you get on the golf side and it's windy, and then you get on the gun club side and it's not, and vice versa, depending on the bank. I will say that visually I feel like there's a lot less going on on the gun club side than the golf side, but they draw for banks every day. And so you're really not going to get a chance to be like, Oh, well, I'm only shooting in the gun club side. Like, good luck. You're going to be, you're going to be moving from one side to the other side. Um, you know, it's, it's basically two different gun clubs separated by a road, you know, which is not as common. I mean, most people, you know, I guess San Antonio where they had the layers back in the day where you'd go from a to B and kind of that thing. But most gun clubs you're shooting on one line that, that I've, that I've been to. Oh yeah. You know, it, like I said, it's a great place. You know, there was a lot of good scores broke. Um, you know, we can start with the, the championship events. Yeah. You know, the, the singles was one, well, there was 300. 200, right? Yep. Three, or three, 200, excuse me. Fontello. Michael Fontello, Jack Noss, and then Steve Miller from PA. And after one round, Steve Miller broke the lone 25 and one and Fontello took a uh, runner up cause Jack was junior goal. Category. Yeah. So he fell to his category, you know, and then we shot the doubles Sunday morning. Now, if we back up real quick, when we first started, I went dead lost on the first pair. 
doubles that first day. Broke 99. We go for the championship doubles. I was seeing them good. I went, pull, bang, come over. I'm like, uh-oh. I lost it. Dead loss. And I'm like, hmm. I said, well, and this goes to the mental side of it for everybody out there. I just told myself, I said, well, you broke 99 the other day. Just stay in them. Look at them. And I run that rest of them out for 49. You broke 50. And and I will, guys, uh, folks out there, I'll tell you, Zach was really smoking them. So I think he put his full chokes in for doubles. So, I, I was I was gamey that day. I said, I seen that Ricky Marshall dead loss on the first pair, and I could smell blood in the water. But the problem was, is when I got to the end, my boat ran out of juice, and I, I, I ended up in the chum water with the sharks. Hold on now. I'll get to that. So... We go to shoot the doubles, second 50. Zach's rolling right. I mean, he is smoking them. And I thought, all right. And I told you when you walked by, I said, just do what you're doing. Keep it the same. And the first three pairs, you were bang, 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 bang. The fourth pair, you went bang, bang. And I went. There it went. I hear the loss, and I'm looking right at that target, and, I'm, and you dusted it. I was like, okay. Hey, you know what? I, I didn't get it. I was happy with the 99, but I am happy for my good friend Herbert Lewis, who's on the podcast. You broke the lone 100. Herbie you know, won, so. won the doubles, lone 100. So, you know, and, and we'll get to the rest of that story after we – we're going to talk about all the winners first, and then we'll tell stories afterwards. So – Herbie won the, the doubles, lone hunter. And then the handicap, we, we shot it. And it was a little gamey. Um, we drew bank 12, which um, I thought the targets were good. I broke 24, first box missed early or missed late. And then all of a sudden it was like they shut the lights off. Well, the shadows, they start, we started getting shadows in that back. And like I was hanging in that event. I mean, I just, I had a 23 on my first box. And I'm like, okay, you know, that's your, you know, you're not dead here, right? Just stay in these things. And I was able to go 24, 24, 24, but the light was so like, and some of the targets I hit, the difference between hitting it and missing it was one or two pellets. And I just kind of chipped yeah. them here and there. And it was because I was really looking in the light, you know, that it just wasn't, the visibility wasn't great. Really weird. Yeah. And I broke 91 and I was like, you know what? Hey, better than a 90, <laughs> you know? And so, but Terry Lash from PA, um, 98. he won 98 and won the handicap. And then, uh, so then, you know, the all around uh, Cole Henning, which is a junior gold shooter. Uh, he shoots for William Penn university. Um, he won the all around loner. 395. And- Ninety-five had a, there was a several of, of everybody with three ninety-fours, I think, and then um, we had um, Channing Garrett bro, won the sub junior, Tyler Honnold won the junior, uh, Jack Canoss won junior gold because Cole took yep. you know champion, and then Claire Schaefer won the lady one, uh, Debbie Oe Nielsen won lady two, K O E won senior vet. He's still banging targets. and He's still banging them. That morning in the singles on Saturday, he ran that first hundred like it was nothing. I'm like, damn, K don't play. I mean, it's just, you, you never know with him. He just pulls it no. out, and it's just there. Yep. So, and then um, uh, Mark Isner won vet. Carl Chadwell won sub vet. And then Dale Rasmussen was um, chair shooter, you know, for, for the all-around. So, now let's get into the uh, the H O A, which our our buddy Jack won that. I mean, he shot great. I I got to give my hat off to him. I mean, he shot he yeah. shot as well. I'd say he shot as well there at that shoot as he did when he won the ring at the Grand because of the yeah. the hardness of the targets. And he won by I don't know what it was eight or ten birds. I mean, it was quite a it was a good little gap. I think it was nine, if I remember. Nine. Right. I mean. Um, so yeah, I said eight or 10 and it had to be nine. Cause it's the one thing I didn't say. I mean, just <laughs> what I do to him, just a little jab here and there. No, yeah. uh, Jack won the HOA, um, Channing Garrett won the HOA and sub junior, um, Gavin cook, another student of mine, 
Um, he won the junior. And then Abigail uh, Melecha won the lady one. Debbie O.E. Nielsen won lady two. Um, senior vet was Scott Messenger. And then vet was Mark Is Eisner again. And then sub vet was Carl Chadwell. There wasn't a, a chair shooter that shot the overall. Yeah. But great shoot. Um, hats off to all the winners. Um, I know Michael Fontello was runner up, I think, at both the all around and the overall. Um, you know, I don't I I, I, yeah. I didn't stick around for the shoot offs. Tyler and I had to yeah. catch a plane with Wyatt and and Garrett. Um, um sorry, Garrett. Barrett. Um uh, little bear flew back with us. And uh so we had to get to the airport and get out of there and and of course, you know, now we'll get to some stories about the shoot offs, folks. So first, I get a call. Hey, we're tied in the doubles. Me, Zach, Joey, Charnigo. Well, you didn't Joey. get a call. We you knew it from one before you left the the grounds. By the oh, way, because uh, yeah, I did. And Joey goes, "We just flip or whatever." Oh yeah, yeah. So I told Diane before I left. I said, "You watch. Zach will come in here and be like, only one of them's here. Uh, the other one forfeit, and then me and so and so flip." And she goes, y'all are cut cards. And I said, sounds good. Oh, no. Joey left. I left. Zach goes, I won. I, <laughs> hey, so folks, I want you to know something. This is the best trick you can have when you're trying to beat Ricky Marshall and Joe Charnigo. If, if they leave that gun club, you head right over to that desk and you sign in and say, I'm ready to shoot. And, and I was ready to shoot because I shot a handicap shoot off that day, and we had an all around shoot off that day. Ready. So I already had my, my guns lubed up. I was ready, baby. So that was and and folks, we're we're just giving Zach crap. Joey and I were, you know, we're we're gonna do an episode. The three of us in Ohio, we're probably gonna shoot some doubles at the practice trap. I'm in for five hundred a man or something. I'm in. We'll do it. We'll go shoot some doubles. Hey, there was a little bit of pause there, and that that voice cracked a little bit. No pause. So, we're ready. I'll I'll, I'll shoot doubles. Now, if we were shooting handicap, I don't know, but doubles, I'm in. <laughs> well, listen. Here, so we had a great time down there. You know, myself, Tyler, Zach, Zach Bryant, and Elena McCarthy. We all stayed together in this Airbnb that. That our wonderful host here picked out and sent pictures and looked great. Kind of looked at the pictures. I'm like, mm, yeah, yeah, I think it'll pass maybe. You know, they get there. Oh, yeah, it's great. Tyler and I get there, and I'm like, hmm. Hey, well, that's, the thing. that's the thing, folks. When you get an Airbnb, what I've learned is the pictures don't always dictate how it is. It looks real nice, looks real clean. You get in there, and sometimes it's it's not always what you want it to be. I will say that the beds were a little thin, and you know, Ricky would wake up every day like a like a bear. He he kind of looked like this, and he'd have a he'd have a hook in his neck, and we were looking for chiropractors trying to go to the joint and get massaged out and our, because our backs were all messed up from these little paper thin beds that we, we were sleeping the, in. We went to the chiropractor, what, like three times. We went to Walmart and bought pillows because had to get pillows. pillows thin. And then to boot. So it, it wasn't that I didn't think the neighborhood was that bad. I mean, it was acreages except for behind the house. There was a couple sheds that I said, man, those look like little tiny homes or something. And sure enough, they were people in and out of there. And I was like, this is kind of odd. So Thursday night, I'm laying in bed. We got back. Tyler and I, I had to go pick him up. He went to, I think he went to dinner. It was for Anna Raw's birthday. It was Anna Raw's birthday night. Yeah. So. They went out because we went, I don't remember where we did. We went somewhere. But I, I come back late because I had to go yeah, get him. Me, me, Zach, and Elena got in there pretty early and went to bed because we had dinner at Steve Stedman's that night. It was that barbecue. We were at Steve Stedman's. We had a cigar. We, we, we had some dinner there, and we were having a good time. And then me and Zach and Elena left, and you had to go pick up Tyler. Yeah. So well, you left. Miller, I went and actually looked for some bourbon. Found a wonderful liquor store that I found a 175 liter of Eagle Rare 
for a hundred dollars. I was happy with that. Purchased that in a nice bottle of, of Yellowstone store pick. So I thought I'll just hang out another 30 minutes. He'll be ready. Picked him up. We got back. It was like what? 10 o'clock, maybe 10 30. You were sleeping. I was and done. Yeah. Tyler got in the bathroom to take a shower. Of course he's whatever. It was 11 20. I was on FaceTime with my lovely wife, Jody at 11 23, my time in Florida. And I hear, and I was like, why is Zach banging on the bathroom door? And I thought nothing of it, whatever. I'm laying there and I hear, now I jump out of bed and I open my bedroom door and walk out the hallway and look, and you're not at the bathroom door. I said, Tyler? And he goes, what? I said, who's knocking? He goes, I don't know. And I go, hello? And they go, sheriff's office. <laughs> and I said, what? <laughs> so I throw a shirt on, walk up to the door, and I look out. I can't see no sheriff's cars. I got nothing. And I'm like, well, I got a cell phone. I've done some damage with them before to people. So, <laughs> you know, I'm thinking, like, can I do that? So I opened the door because I seen the badge then and they were hiding off to the side, three of them, full SWAT gear, everything. And I'm like, uh, can I help you? And they're like, you live here? And I said, no, we rented the place Airbnb. The one sheriff went, oh, well then the guy started talking. Well, who'd you rent from? I said, my buddy Ren, he's asleep. We need to talk to him. So that's when I come over and I'm like, hey, Zach. Yeah, so, so, so I come out. I come out my bedroom. So this is so let me just tell you something, folks. These are the thoughts that come through my mind because I'm sleeping. First of all, I think Ricky's just messing with me because he came home and he just wants to mess with me and wake me up because that's what Ricky does sometimes. Oh, no, not, no, no. not this time. So so he says, Zach, get out of here. And I'm like, is it important? He says, oh, yeah, that's important. And I, I come out. I'm wiping the sand out of my eyes, and I see these cops. And at first, I'm thinking, well, maybe Ricky got his gun stolen or something, and we're doing a report or whatever. Like, I had no idea. And then they're like, no, we're here looking for the owner of the house, like this, that, and the other thing. And I, They wouldn't tell us much, folks. But no. what I gathered from the ordeal, and this is just a Zach Nanini, like idea here, they wanted the owner really, really bad. And it had something to do with what was going on in those back houses. So I don't know if that was some kind of a – a manufacturing facility or a or a movement of a movement of, of products facility but 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 there was something going on back there with those cars in and out and these yeah. cops like were basically breaking the door down to come and arrest some people and when I showed them that I had the Airbnb and like we were just in from out of town and they're just like their faces they're just like it was like when I missed that last target in doubles. I just got deflated. They were just they're just like oh damn it we don't got them and I'm well, like yeah it ain't us Hey, Zach comes walking off Bryant, you know, all shirtless, you know. <laughs> and yeah, they almost they almost had to shoot him. His pecs were too big. <laughs> I said, he goes, what's going on? I said, oh, nothing, just hanging out with the sheriffs, you know, but the, the, the they were cool. You know, they seen the gun cases. Now, we kept all our guns out at the club, and uh, so we had, there were some gun cases there of, of Zach and Elena's, and and I said, there's no firearms in it. And I said, we're here at the Silver Dollar. They knew what the Silver Dollar was. They were cool. They didn't, you know, can we search? Right? They were just like, but I'll, here's a piece of advice for everybody out there. When you rent an Airbnb, as I've done in the past, and or VRBO, you get the name, contact, phone number. Hey, and I looked through the messages. I had the name and the phone number. I, I had the name and the phone number the whole time. I just didn't know it at the time. And the cops are like, who's the guy? And I'm scrolling. I'm like, I don't know. And yeah. here's the other thing that I want to teach the listeners. Us Italians, we don't like to rat out people. So you just keep it quiet. You just you let it go under the radar. Let them figure it out. But And for, for future reference to people, call them, check them out. You know, look at the reviews. I looked, there wasn't no reviews. I was like, uh, we had a few reviews. They, it was it was a top end place, but you know, <laughs> it's it's a thankless it's a thankless job. 
You know, I, I, I ran it out. I put it on my credit card. These guys are like, hey, that was a bad service. We're not paying. And I'm like, ah. But they all paid. They all paid. I wrote a check to Zach for a full amount. And my son said, Dad, we need to be getting a hotel. And I said, well, so I'd really like to thank my buddy JT Spangler from PA. He he bought a, a house on the on the gun club side. Um, Justin was staying there and the kids, and him and, and his girlfriend Chelsea, and he had his uh, or his, on the golf club side. Excuse me, on the gun club side, he had his two bedroom house. And he's like, "Hey, my buddy, he left, went back to PA. You're more than welcome to stay." So he, he allowed him to stay, and then you. Moved out also, you second and we, we, we only We only got one night. Airbnb, I got to tell you, they were great to work with, and they said, well, if this is dangerous and you want to go stay in a hotel, if you can find one, we'll pay for it. So we ended up staying in a hotel the last night at the Holiday Inn in Odessa, and, you know, that was very, very, very nice, um, and I really enjoyed that. But uh, See, the moral – there. We, so- that was a refund, so that's yep. I, oh, I'm gonna owe you. I'm gonna have to buy you dinner somewhere. We're gonna have to figure this out. But right, but I will then, say it was enjoy. trap talk, and we were staying in the trap house. Yeah, <laughs> that's horrible. Yeah, yes. Yeah. But but, but here's the here's the thing. These are why we go to these shoots to get these stories, people. I mean, we have fun. We're, we're, yeah. Let me just tell you, when I'm laying there in bed, I'm literally, I was falling asleep talking to Jody, and that, I'm like, and I first, and after I get done, you know, pistol, because I always have a pistol, and I'm like, I don't have a pistol. No, he didn't have nothing. And here's the thing. Ricky's so friendly. He's like a Labrador. The cops go up on the door. He's like, oh, come on in. We got guns. And I'm like, you know how to say warrant, warrant, Ricky. You just say, no, listen, listen. They weren't after me, so and they weren't after you, and they weren't after Zach and Elena. I knew you that. Gave them up. You can set the Italians in there. Go get them. And I said, "Damn it, Ricky, ah, just tell them no warrant. Stay out of the house." I did think about asking the cops if I could borrow his handcuffs just to cuff you, throw you in the closet, and leave you for a while. <laughs> but no, it was, a, it was a fun time. It was an interesting deal. So, but yeah, I, I will give a shout out to my buddy JT Spangler for. For hooking me up and and Tyler. Tyler, when he said no problem, Tyler went over and gave him a hug. I said Little oh, Little T man. didn't want to have to deal with any more shakedowns from the cops. He was like, Dad, well, did you see them people in that house over there? He said, because they remember Zach in the back. You know, we had a pool table there. I thought, oh great, we'll get a place of pool, you know, get to pay for my hotel stay on Zach. There was the pool table looked like someone had been shot on it. <laughs> and it was red <laughs> felt. <laughs> I, I did not give them a five star review. Let's just put it that way. Oh, it was very interesting to say the least. Well, you know, I had a good time. It, it was a good shoot over and all. We got some good stuff out of it. I had a lot of fun, made some good memories, and you know, it oh is yeah, what it is. No, it, it, it's a great deal, and that's what you know. I, I love going to Florida. I get to see all my my friends that I've shot with for years, um, and a lot of them that don't shoot anymore. You know. Uh, my buddy Tad Johnson from Ohio, you know, he let Tyler and I use uh, use his cart for a few days, and and uh, and that, and and you know, I appreciate that, and it, it was just a great time. I mean, we really, like I said, we ate well, um, everything, you know, even even on my my little excursion, you know, of, of weight loss we're trying to do. You know, I yeah, we, we went on some walks. Me and Justin had walks a lot. You joined us too, so we were trying to. We'd go around that pond and and work Listen, it out. I thought it was a race. I was like, boys, it's a marathon. <laughs> we were like, hey, this is something. Me and Justin looked at each other. We said, hey, this is where we can beat them. Finally, let's go. Oh yeah, and yeah, yeah, then the next day you walk like a couple friggin' we, you know, crippled you, up. You, you rise to the occasion, folks. You rise to the occasion. That's what it is. I but, up. I beat you back to the house. Yeah, you did do that. Nobody's going to doubt that one. That was true. I didn't know which way you went. I said they had it gone right. Well, you went left. My my fault you walked an extra mile. <laughs> it is what it is. Well, well, everybody, thanks for tuning in for another happy Friday. Uh, we'll Absolutely. catch you again soon and, and uh, have fun out there. Shoot well. Well, Rick, before we get to the show, 
we got to take a minute and thank all of our sponsors because we wouldn't be here without them. Uh, this show is brought to you by Craig Off. Yes, Craig Off. I've shot one since about 2006. Uh, best gun out there. Balance, customer service, the people at Craig Off, top notch. Everything you need to know about a good shotgun, that's for sure. Uh, yes. we got to thank Winnick, Winnick Stockworks, Custom Guns Stocks in Lincoln, Missouri. Uh, nice hat, Ricky. Yeah, I, I love my Winnick. I broke hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hundreds with my winning stock. But in all seriousness, get a hold of Bobby, Luke, Bill. Get yourself a stock made. It'll change your shooting. I want to say thank you to Remington. Uh, they've supported the show for since day one, and they've supported me uh, for a very long time. Made All-America Team shoot nitros and SDSs for many years. And we also got to thank Game Masters. If you're looking for a gun, Ricky, you can help them out. Yep, get a hold of me at Game Masters too. Call me, text me, email me, send a smoke signal. I get you any gun out there. We carry about every brand available in the trap, skeet, sporting clays, even carry some hunting guns, some hunting rifles, whatever you need. We can I'm going to have to try that smoke signal. I haven't communicated with you that way yet, but that sounds like fun. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> so for uh, the next sponsor, Shot Tracker, uh, we just seen them at Vegas at the SHOT Show, and they gave us some great insight on the product. Yep, it's, it's like having a coach on the end of your barrel. Um, they got some new updates coming out that'll really change the game with the shot tracker, make it a little easier to set up. So uh, get a hold of them, get yourself a shot tracker, and, and uh, it'll help you. want to thank you to Shotguns West, Ryan Castani, for being our, our Pila sponsor. Uh, where do you get your Pilas from? They're doing a great job. They've got the new frames out. They're sleek, they're modern, and they look fantastic. Also, really excited about this year's uh, new sponsor, Outlaw Engineering. Yeah, Outlaw Engineering is owned by Randy Freston II, uh, R2. Uh, I've known him and his family for years. Uh, his dad's past president of the ATA. Uh, he does a lot of engineering in the oil field business. So get a hold of him for all his uh, engineering needs you got, and, and he can hook you up. Big thank you to White Flyer, uh, making a great target and a great product. We've been smoking those all over the country, right, Ricky? Yeah, they uh, they came out with a new Eco Flyer this year, so hopefully we can get to shoot them at, at some shoots. Uh, I know we did a lot of testing on them, and they are an awesome target, so a little alternative to the pitch target. So looking, looking forward for to trying that out. Another yeah. thing that I'm looking forward to seeing more of is SOS uh, Clays. Yeah, the, the SOS Clay software owned by Greg Pink. Uh, doing an awesome job. He's taking over the, the trap shooting world uh, with his software. It's top notch. You know, get a hold of him uh, for any needs you have in the shotgun world. And last but not least, we got gun and trophy insurance. Rick, you got to tell me about that. Yeah, you can get a hold of Cole or Larry Cushman, uh, family owned business, and they take care of all my needs on, on gun insurance. They also offer, offer trophy insurance for all your wildlife trophies. Uh, to insure them too, but top notch. Get a hold of them and, and they can hook you up. Literally, it's simple. Get online, gunandtrophy.com. You can uh, get a policy going, I think, less than about 10 minutes. Very reasonably priced. That's awesome. Thank you to all the sponsors. And with that being said, let's get on let's to the show. Get on the show.